Hello world and welcome to my first Blender game video tutorial series part 5. In this part we're going to add some real text, uh, real time bitmap text into our game. But before we do that I want to show you my splash screen just so you know that I'm using Blender 2.6 revision 41226. So this tutorial will be in three parts. Part 1 will be to set up the real time text object, bitmap text object. The part 2 will be about using this object to make a counter, a time counter, and part 3 will be to use this object to make a coin counter. So let's move on to part 1, that is to set up the object, and the first thing you want to do is to download a very special file that you can find uh, by going on your best friend on the internet, Google, typing Blender Real Time text and then you have a bunch of links and I will put one in the video description below and the file you are looking for is called arielbd.tga and I have already downloaded this file so what I'll do is that I'll import it into Blender by dragging this corner right here and creating a UV image editor then I'll press image open image and the one I'm looking at is in my folders resource arielbd.tga now what we want to do is to map this image onto a plane in your in our head up display scene so I'll go there right now I'll create a scene uh, a plane by pressing shift a and selecting plane rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees dragging up scale it down and I want it around around that size. Next I want to unwrap this object so I'll go in edit mode press U unwrap and I want my unwrap and this is the cube right here that you can move around pressing G scale pressing S or rotate pressing R I want it to be the exact size of this character right here so I'll scale it oh, scale it down moving up and something like this should be fine okay next in order to map this texture onto our plane we need to create a material that we'll call real time text and we need to create a texture that we'll call real time text we want this texture to to be an image or movie and not a cloud so I'll press here and I want to use the image that is called arealbd.tga now all the black in this image is in fact transparent as you can see if I press this show alpha button here or here and in order to use this transparency we need to make our material completely transparent by enable, enabling transparency and dragging the alpha to zero and we need and we'll also drag the speaker R to zero and we need to tell Blender to use this object as an alpha to use the alpha of this object and right now as you can see here we have all the object map onto all the image map onto our plane but we don't want that we want only the UV of what we have unwrapped so what we'll do is that we will change the mapping to be from generated to UV and now you can see that only the character I have unwrapped is on my plane and that's exactly what we want however it is not rotated correctly so I'll go back in edit mode and rotate my plane until I have what I want exactly like this and the last thing we need to do is we need to tell Blender that this image will be used for a very special feature very special calls and it is to be a text object so we need to press this text button in the game setting and if you can't find this text button here it might be because you are using a, an older version than 2.6 in which case you have to go in object data while you are in edit mode to find the option it was very confusing and I think they changed it for the best okay and now if we start the game you can see that we don't have any object 
And the reason for that is that when we press this text object, Blender will look for a property, very special property, that must be called text, with a capital T as the first letter, and this property must be a string, and everything I will write into this string property will be written when I'll, when I'll start the game. So for a test, I'll write hello world, and you can see if I start the game that I have hello world written. Perfect. And now we have our real-time text, because if we change this value of this property while the game is running, the text will change in real time. So that's the end of the first part. Let us switch to the second part, that is to transform this object into a time counter. So to do that, the way we're going to do that is that we'll create another property that will be a second, that will be called sec for second, and we'll change the value, the type of this property to be an integer. Now I want to create a second because I cannot tell Blender that I want this property to be 60 and I want it to I want to subtract one of this property at every second because this is a text property and 60 minus 1 means nothing to Blender if it is a string. So what we'll do is that we will subtract 1 to this property here and at every second, and each time this property is changed, we will make our text to copy this property, and this is how we will change our real-time display. So the way I'm going to do that is by adding two property, one sensor and one actuator, connect both of them. I want this evaluation type to be change and the property sec, so every time the second the property sec change, we set our actuator we trigger our actuator, and I want this actuator to be copy property text, because I want to copy into the text property an object that will be called, and, and now it asks me for an object, and I want to set this object that is called plane.003, but I'll rename it to be time counter here we go, and into the time counter I want to select the sec, so it will copy the sec property in, of our time counter object into our text property. Every time this sec second, this sec property is influenced. So next, I want to add another property. Uh, no, sorry, I want to add a property actuator, and this property actuator will add minus one, so it will subtract one to the property called sec. And we want to fire this actuator at every second, so the way we're going to do that is by adding an always uh, sensor. And you might remember that I have told you that this button here, the true level triggering pulse mode, will send a positive pulse every frame your object is true, and uh, your sensor is true. So since our always sensor is always true, it will always send a positive pulse. However, the moment you press this button, you can see that you have this frequency slider here that just enabled. And if I enter 60 in it, for example, instead of sending a positive pulse at every logic tick, it will send a positive pulse at every 60 logic ticks. And since, and since there is 60 logic ticks per second, it will send a positive pulse each second, which means that if I connect it to this, it will subtract 1, to our sec property at every second. And that's exactly what we want. However, it will also do it the first frame. So I'll just change it to 61, so that when I start the game, uh, the counter starts at 60 and goes down. So as you can see, now everything is working perfectly. And the last thing we want to do on this object is that when we reach 0 or minus 1, we send our player to our game over scene. So to do that, I'll add a property sensor, two scene actuators, change the type to set scene, game over, and remove our level one scene. Connect this one to this one, this controller to this controller, and I want this property sec to be minus 1. And I want it to be minus 1 because I want to see the 0 in the time. 
So for example, if I set this value to 2, 0, and then we're game over. I'll change it back to 51, uh, 61. And the last thing we have to do is to rename our properties. So our logic brick, so I'll call this one sec change text equal sec. Oh, sec, not sex. Uh, always each 60. Property sec minus 1. Property um, sec equal minus 1. We set our scene to be camo. And we remove level 1. Like this. Oops. Here we go. And now we can collapse everything. And it all makes sense. Great. So that's the end of the second part. That was to create a time counter. And now we'll use this object to create uh, a coin counter. So I'll press Shift D to create a duplicate of it. Move it on the X axis around here. And I want to change this seg property to be our coin property. And I want to change the default value to 0 instead of 61. Um, also, I forgot to tell you that I have put the default value of 60 to my text so that when we start the game, it is equal to 50. 60. But now that I notice it, it's not really important because we are already setting it with this property, with this always sensor. Anyway, uh, I want this text to have the view default value of 0, this coin to have the de default value of 0, and I'll just, and now that I have changed the name of my coin property, I have to change it everywhere I was using it, because Blender doesn't track it. It should, in my opinion, but it is not implemented yet. Okay, everything's great. We don't want this game over level 1 scene to happen, so I'll delete everything. And we don't want to remove one to our property sec, but we want to add one to our property sec. And we want to add one not every second, but every time we receive a message that will be called coin plus one. There we go. Connect this one to this one. Just rename things quickly. Coin change. X equal coin, and we want to change the name of this time counter of this object to from time counter to coin counter. And now everything should work. However, if we start the game, ah, nothing. No, don't bother. Everything is okay. Because in my default tests before I did this trial, I was leaving this value completely empty, so when I started the game it was empty. But since I have put zero on it, now it works perfectly. Seems I have learned something myself. Okay, great. So now we need to send this message that is called coin plus one. And what will send this message will be obviously our coin object that I will grab in my level one scene, move it over my character, and I want to change the setting of this coin object to be a uh, sensor, set collision bounds to save on processing power, and this object will behave exactly the same way as this key. So what I'll do is select the object, shift to select the key, object, game, copy logic breaks. And the only difference between the two objects is the message that will be sent. And we don't want to send a message that is called get key, we want to send a message that is called coin plus one. And we don't want to send it to key plane, we want to send it to coin counter. And now, if I start the game, remove my debug properties so that we see our time counter, and our coin counter is working perfectly as well. And we can duplicate this coin here, so, and put it everywhere in our scene, and it will, and it will work perfectly. So that's all for this tutorial. 
Um, everything is set up now, so I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, in part 5.5, .5, we will learn how to change this image to use a different font. So I hope you have enjoyed this video, that you have learned something from it. I wish you a great day, and I'll see you in part 6.